Welcome to the release of our first JLM1 models. In this video I want to show you the Junior and the 50mm EDF version. And before I show you the models here in the workshop, Mark will introduce our new website AeroJTP where you can download all the STL files for our JLM jets. Renee and I are proud to announce our joint website AeroJTP.com. Here we are presenting the JRM series uh, and the sale of the STL files for the JRM series. We've developed a 50mm EDF and a 30mm EDF model range. In the 50mm we have four models of varying complexity and price point and in the 30mm EDF we have the junior series of the Pro and the Basic we're also offering an add-on set for the 50mm EDF jets, which includes an FPV plate, a nose and tail camera mount and camera bracket, and a series of winglets that are exchangeable with the default wingtips on the 50mm series JRM jets. Information about individual models can be found under the Our Models section at the top of the website. And on those pages, for example, we have here the conventional takeoff and landing with panel lines. There are some overview illustrations showing elevational views and dimensions of the jet and our minimum printer build volume required to print the parts for this particular model. And also what's included in terms of the STL files for that particular set. Uh, we have also a comparison table, which we've included to identify quickly the differences between the JRM 01C 30mm Junior and Junior Pro and our JRM 50mm EDF series from the basic hand launch, the advanced hand launch, the conventional takeoff and landing, no panel lines and conventional takeoff and landing with panel lines. And this provides a quick overview as to the differences between the models. Here we have our JRM01 Junior basic jet. It's the smallest of our family of jets for the JRM family. The overall wingspan is 480 millimeters. The overall height, highest point to lowest point is 155 millimeters and the length tip of nose to edge of the uh, elevons is 634 millimeters. Powered by two 30 mil EDF fans that are accessible from this hatch on the underside of the unit and I'll just hide that here and see that the hatch is held in place by four magnets and easy access cable routing into the battery and flight control department up here so we turn off those included a battery divider wall so that uh, stops the battery from sliding back and this can be set at various increments towards the nose is a relatively easy jet to print and put together. Our JRM Junior Basic 30mm EDF jet comes with the STL files for the jet itself and two left and right Elevon setting jigs. These are the jigs that allow the range of motion of the Elevons to be set. Here is our JRM01 Junior Pro 30mm EDF jet. Uh, similar to the Junior Basic, the sizes are the same. The main difference between the Basic and the Pro is our yaw uh, vectored nozzle towards the rear of the jet. So we have incorporated here a servo that operates uh, the yaw nozzles and we still have the Elevon aileron mix uh, towards the rear of the jet. Same features as the Basic except for that uh, vector nozzle upgrade. Hole at the underside of the jet to allow this jet to be presented on a desk stand. Our Junior Pro set comes with the STL files for all the items on screen. So that includes the STL files for the JRM Junior Pro jet with vector, your vector nozzles. And we have a series of wing ordnance and the wing pylons, as well as a spray paint, uh, canopy spray paint mask jig that can be laid over the front of this area of the jet here we present the JRM 01C hand launch basic 50mm EDF jet. 
overall size of this jet with a wingspan of 879 millimeters, the overall height of 268 millimeters, an overall length of 1,153 millimeters. The jet is our entry level in the 50 millimeter EDF range, hand launched version, elevator control, rudder on the twin vertical stabilizers, plus we have aileron wing control. The jet is split up into two sections, the, the nose section with a separate canopy and the rear. The overall skin is clean skin we call it. There are no panel lines and no unnecessary details. It's a very simplified basic version of our JRM 01C 50 range. Our JRM 01C 50mm EDF hand launch basic set comes with the STL files for the jet and for our control surface setting jigs. Here we have our JRM 01C 50mm hand launched advance. The key features here are the vector nozzles at the rear and we have our droop noses or leading edge slats active on the front of the wings. The EDF units can be accessed by removal of the screwed on skids and this region here these two components pull out as a single entity and can be used to access the EDF fans. Here we have our JRM 01C50 CTOL no panel line jet. The key features of this particular model are of course the retractable undercarriage, the leading droop nose slats and the vectored thrust at the rear of the jet and as the title implies no panel lines so clean skin version on this particular model. This is the flagship model of our JRM series. This is the JRM 01C50 conventional takeoff and landing seat hole with panel lines. As you can see here we've spent quite a bit of effort detailing the surfaces to make them look unique and uh, quite interesting. Our JRM 01C50 seat hole with panel line set includes the STL files for the jet with retractable undercarriage, droop nose leading edge slats and vectored thrust and a, a series of accessories. We've also included some ordnance and underwing pylons uh, that can be added to the jet and a series of accessories for painting and painting masks and canopy mask as well as detail surface painting masks on the seat hole version of this jet. In this video I want to show you the junior and the 50 millimeter EDF version and um, show you all the details how the battery is installed and the setup with your TX. So I would say Let's start with the wonderful Junior. Here we got the Junior Pro. This one got uh, your vector. And let's take a look inside. Let's start on the front. I'm using an 4S 800 milliamp battery, super small one, and also super lightweight. They weigh around 100 grams. And the battery is here into the front. And we see we tuned a bit the JM Junior to the last version so you can easily slide in and out in front here I put maybe it's visible just a bit soft foam so that the battery gets slightly pressed in and then with a little press you insert this wall and you can select a lot of steps so that, that you can uh, set up the CG as perfect as possible also, bigger batteries are possible, I would say to 1000 milliamps, and then you got longer flight time. So now the jet is upside down, and here we can see the CG position. This is a little tail where you can easily grab with your fingers and level out the CG. Super easy to do. Also, we can see the yaw vector and all the rewards, the steering rods. This is how it's done with a fork head and the ball head. Also, the antenna is going through here. And something special to the lower side, here got, we got the first prototype. We also provide some ordnance, some drop tanks um, on the Junior Pro version. They are just included on the Junior Pro version and they are slided 
super easily. So they are built from two parts. One, this holder printed from PLA and the drop tank itself from lightweight PLA. And you can see super easy, slide it in. And then there is, this, there is a small click momentum and then it is saved. They are super lightweight. You can easily exchange them. If you like the look of this jet with this ordinance, looks super nice. Let's go back to the Technic. Here we got the gyro, the 3-axis gyro. The link for the gyro is also included in the description in your download package. And we got the receiver. In this jet, there are four channels needed because of this yaw vector. Let's see it moving. That's how it works. And the tail runs as well. And when we check the jet a little bit, you can also see everything is moving caused by the gyro. And upside down again. Let's take a look to the engines. These hedges are held by some magnets. And I'm using 30 millimeter QX fans with 5000 kW. On 4S, they are also 6000 kV possible. How the wiring is put here and also for the servo, it's put in there. And everything is saved just by the cover with the magnets. Thrust test with the Junior Pro with vector nozzles. Three hundred grams of thrust, so there is no loss with the vector nozzles. I think this was a good tuning with the Naka inlets and also the whole ducting was optimized. Now some tests with the six thousand kV motors installed. Let's see. It's about sixty gram more of thrust, but they are quite loud. I think also the amps are high. But for fast flying and for maximum power, uh, I would recommend you these 6000 kV. For installing the wings, you can choose if you bond them to the fuselage or if you use a carbon tube like I did here, four millimeter carbon tube, so you can still disassemble them. Also, the elevators are always to take them off. Just pull here and get the carbon rod out and you can all assemble them just the the vertical steps has to stay so it is super super tiny and super easy to transport and now let's take a look on the deflections on your sdl set these jigs are also included they will be put just in this gap on each side and these jigs show you the zero position for the elevator and also the maximum deflection I got here to 25 in each direction and with completely with aileron mix it runs to a bit more than 35. This is for good acrobatic so with this setting it is super agile this 25 to 25 on elevator and maximum deflections to 35. If you want to have not that much, if you want to just make some, some park flying, you can reduce this maybe to 20 and, and 20 elevator and 30 altogether with the aileron mix. That's quite enough. Next is the yaw vector. First make sure that you got a good zero position. Take just some bar like this, some wood bar and check if they are aligned so that there is no drifting to left and right and when this is okay uh, you can go to the maximum possible also be careful on the tx i got always 25 percent expo because the your vector is super effective so make sure that you got enough expo and start with with just some little movement for normal flight you don't need them for normal flight. It's absolutely okay when you fly it with elevator and the tail run mix. Also for, for turning and so on. 
and flying rolls and macro acrobatic just for 3d acrobatic and super slow flight you will need the the yaw vector and also for um, flat spins or some crazy maneuvers you will need them but be careful with them they are super super effective the flying weight of the jet is almost exactly 400 grams and about 300 grams of thrust it will produce in this setup when you go to the 6000 kvs you can reach up to 400 it's up to you and with this setup it's a super mixture from nice flight behaviors and also possible to fly some cool 3d actions and last but not least we got the canopy painting schablon it's also just included on the pro version put it here and make sure that is good in position you also can use some tape and press it a bit down as better is the result from the painting yeah and that's it to the junior and junior pro and now switch over to the jm1 c50 here we got the version c toll with panel lines so the top version and also some parts from the add-on sets. Here we can see the winglets that are included in the add-on set and these camera holders as well. And I would say we also start on the front and take a closer look to this jet. Let's start again on the front. Here we can see one satellite receiver and also the gear mechanic with the servo. That's how it works. This part is the, is the servo arm stiffener. I just can recommend it and you can see I'm using four of these rubber bands. They are just strong enough also for for uneven glass uh, grass surfaces and No, it's not working at the moment. Here we can see the small servo for the steering with this servo safer linkage and when I Bring the, uh, the, the, the gear down now it will work also Here we can see how it works on top it is saved with this lock ring and also on all axes I put some drop of super glue to save it from coming loose and this axis here as well this this carbon thing is nice so let's go on this hatch gives us access to the battery and we can see there is uh, there is a, a lot of room this is cause I'm using uh, quite Heavy battery for longer flight time. This is a 5S 4200 amps, but you can go also uh, down I would say to 3000 amps and with a more lightweight battery you have to go a little bit forward and there is a lot of room for this and The battery is saved with this Velcro tape on the bottom That it can't slide and for saving the battery there are these shims included one smaller one for a bigger battery and a bigger one for smaller battery and they are just put in here just push them a little bit and now the battery is completely saved and can't get loose and you can set up your CG extremely perfect and here right above the gear is a small dent for measuring the CG you will feel it right with your fingers and there you can level the, the jet and it should, should be balanced along this uh, dent. Okay, let's go on. Under these hatches, these Naka inlets, we can see the, the ESC. These are super small ones. The link is also in the assembly instructions. You will find all the links to all electronics that are used here. And here you got easy access if you want to check it. And on electronics, we got the receiver, the gyro, and this is for telemetry and a lot of wiring and let's let's check out the deflections from the surfaces we start with the droop nose there are two steps and the first step is 10 millimeter and the second uh, 23 so a wide range it's driving i put it on a three step switch also with the switch i mixed the the gyro gain and also the dual rate of the deflections when we take a look we take a look at the deflections they are very big 
and when they come down, they get even a bit bigger. So super acrobatic. The vector nozzles and elevators are again mixed with Delta Mix. So the elevators are also tailorons. Super important for 3D flight. When you just want to cruise, you don't need these big movements. Here are also the jigs for the zero position of the elevator. You can see here. And let's have a look on the deflections. First, we start with the normal deflections for fast flight. And we can see this, this runs about till 15, the, the nose from the elevator, and also 15 up. So 15, 15, and when aileron is additional, then we nearly reach the, the 35. Also on, on, on up, there is a little bit less, just to, to 30. So it's about doubled. So just elevator 15, 15, and the aileron 15 again. Here we can see just aileron. I just move the aileron here and that's also about 15. And when I go to maximum, so when I go to super slow flight and the droop nose are completely down, there's a little bit more deflection. You can see just the elevator runs till 30 and 25 in the other direction. And the complete mix, yeah, I think there is not so much left for, for the mix anymore but there is much more elevator de deflection. So for measuring the aileron deflections, there is a, there's a measurement jig that's already installed. We can see the zero position. And I start again with the smaller deflections. It runs about 15 down and 20 up. There's a little bit difference between up and down to make it fly more smooth and don't add any your momentum to it so that's this this is like it should be 15 down and about 20 up and when i go to maximum deflection we go 25 down and 30 up so it's, it's much more for acrobatic 3d acrobatic and super slow flight on the vector nozzles, make sure that they are aligned. And also when your jet stands on a table, there should be a right angle. When your jet is flat on the table, the nozzles should be aligned on a right angle, right to the surface of the table. Then you got good zero position. And here we can see the, the movement of the of the vector nozzles. I'm using maximum possible movement. This is for acrobatics and for slower flight there is not that much needed. You can choose as you like to. If you don't like the vector nozzles you can also block them in the zero position. This is no problem. For normal flight they are not needed. This is especially for acrobatics, super slow flight, cobra maneuver, cool beats when, when you need them. The measurement jig for the wing can also be used for the vertical stabilizer. Here we got zero position and this runs to 35 or even a bit more, say 36, 37, here till 30. And this is the normal flight mode. So let's say 30, about 30, 35, a normal flight mode. And for full acrobatics, I use maximum. We run till nearly 45 and here about 35. So I also use what is possible for acrobatics. Let's have a look to the main landing gear. There we can also see the installed servo stiffeners. Make sure that this is in one line when the gear is down. And this is how it should like when the gear is retracted. I'm also using four of these rubber bands, four pieces. 
they are with this the gear is strong enough to handle rough surfaces and these are the painting stencils for the canopy when you want to paint a canopy frame and also for the surface just take this stencil put it on and then you can easily paint all the areas you like to mark made a wonderful video for this just take a look in the tutorial series of the JM1 and you can see how they are used and the Bamboo Lab just finished, finished the FPV plate, the second part so this can also be resembled and for those of you, you who want to fly the JM1 as FPV jet here is an extra FPV plane plate designed where you can style all your camera techniques for a nice cockpit view and they are also these attachment tools for the fuselage front and also for the rear where you can install these mini cameras. I'm using here the Mobius mini cam and also with this wide range in the battery compartment. It is no problem to move the battery to the front or to the back even if you install some more technic on the ends of the jet and Together with these nice winglets, you will find these STLs in the add-on set. This is also a super nice view for FPV flying, camera mounted on the rear, so you can see the whole jet flying. situations uh, I was missing the 6000 kV motors all these flights were done with the 5000 ones with uh, 300 gram of thrust so um, there could be a little bit more power vector check reaction tail run and elevator okay Acrobatics like flying rolls and turns was also no problem. Yes, and here was the battery going low, so I have to land uh, out of the airport. But I, I was super happy from the stability of this little 3D printed jet. There was absolutely no damage at all. Okay, 
mocht dat. Push this.